good technique, he will be elite. If his technique becomes great, after his good, then he's a Hall of Famer. Fighting through contact, fighting through the offensive line, beating the double team, multiple moves stacked into one. Just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, we're supposed to football, not storylines. And you are listening to another edition of Blue It Splits, <clears throat> the final edition, not of Blue It Splits, but of the, uh, the draft class. Um, with that being said, you're going to be watching this probably a week later. Uh, today is Saturday, the morning, the afternoon before uh, the Nets play Game 7 um, at Barclays. So I'll be watching that today. Uh, took off from work tonight because I, to, I have to watch and be able to actually watch and not have to uh, try to sleep. Um, <clears throat> but today is the Wilson Part 4 review. Uh, I'm not going to lie. You've heard me a couple times in the stream. Uh, sleep schedule, stuff like that. Today's gonna be a rough one. Uh, wedding last night, which you know that what, what that entails, and then like four hours of sleep. I drove home because the hotel was hot as crap, so I did not sleep. Uh, but so if Zach Wilson part four sucks, watch the other three parts with 105 plays, <laughs> 104 plays. I'm sorry. Um, today we are doing uh, 25 plays i believe it is uh, 105 through 129 <laughs> so many plays but this is hopefully going to be the jets quarterback and you know the next or, or for the next 10 to 15 years i can go back and watch this and you know if you care enough uh this is the most important position on the field so we're uh, we're really breaking it down um and then at the end uh, i'll do the list of strengths and weaknesses um and then that's about it and then after that we move on to um the the uh the free agents who I still have to do Rankins, Cole, Joyner, Curry, uh, about to finish up Tevin Coleman now, uh, Dan Feeney, Croft, Ronald Blair, and Neesman. Um, should get all those guys done relatively easily, um, unless they sign, which it seems like it might happen. Um, a uh, Moses, for example, I'm like I said, if I forget some terms or I blank out on some stuff, forgive me today. Uh, Whatever the hell his first name, Morgan Moses. There you go. Um, if they if they sign uh, Moses, I should be able to get that one in with all the other ones. If they sign Moses and like let's say Nelson or Br like Brashad Breeland, like a corner, uh, I doubt it. I'll be able to get through all of them, but I'm gonna try my best. So uh, we shall see. Um, Wilson Reed middle of the field close weight linebacker clear strike. Okay, three by one. There's so. I feel like at least at least 70 of these plays, 75 of these plays, it was three by one sets. So many three by one sets at BYU. It's not going to be the same thing with the Jets. Um, three by one is is heavy in the, in the NFL too because it really dict, uh, dictates coverage. But uh, the Jets will be running some more, you know, 22, 12, 2, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so it's not going to be, be strict 11, even though um, I, I will – say that I think it favors 11, the offensive personnel the Jets have, um, more than, you know, San Francisco running 12 and 22 because of obviously the Jets receivers. You want to get them on the field as much as you can. So they might be a little, a little bit 11 uh, personnel heavy. Um, and right now it seems like Croft might be that, might be that uh, tight end um, based on, you know, mini camp and all that, which everybody has to preface it by saying, okay, it's just camp. Even if it's just training camp when it comes up or, whatever um but croft is what what, what can't what can herndon do in the past game that croft hasn't throughout his career and he's a better blocker you know so <clears throat> if croft is healthy I, you know it's which is a big if throughout his career if he's healthy he's a better tight end to me than herndon is he's proved more but let's be honest you know um so he might be that guy in 11 person though um you know, that tight end, if, if you have, if you have 12, then, then maybe it's, it's, you know, 12 or 21, depending. Um, maybe it's West Coast comes in, you know, Herndon, Herndon better start catching some balls, man. Cause that was his problem. And uh, even in his rookie year, um, I've said it before on live streams. I've probably said it before in this show. I, I think it was very overrated his rookie year, um, but not to get into a tangent, a bunch of other things that so we're going to watch some, 
some Zach Wilson. So I'll play it first and we'll uh, discuss. Okay. Looks like he drops back and reads, um, reads the middle of the field safety. This is his, his read um, one, two, most likely um, vertical. And then the dig. Wilson sees the route coming open, sees the linebacker, wants for him or wants to wait for him to clear the linebacker strike quick, quick release. It's really consistent, quick, like a quick release, which is great in the NFL because, and, and it's a great thing about Wilson is, you know, he has the anticipation of windows, but he also pairs that with having a really quick release and windows in the NFL are so small. Um, those are two massive traits in terms of hitting those windows. So, um, great, but great job by him reading that waiting from the clear the linebacker. Let's see. He said, drop back, read middle of the field, closed, read the concept, see the linebacker quick release. Again, we, we've talked about it so much with the footwork. Um, I don't have to, I'm not going to rehash it a ton on this show. This is actually, isn't really overly, um, it's not really that bad actually in terms of his, his feet again. You always you're oh, you're going to see a lot of the that interior rotation from the back foot doesn't allow the hips to come all the way through. Puts the front foot a little bit off balance. Um, puts a little bit of extra strain on his upper body. But there are plenty of quarterbacks who rotate inwards like that um, and who don't completely step through their throws. And you know I'm not making the complete comparison, uh, obviously, but Aaron Rodgers is one of those type of guys who flicks the wrist and a ball comes out quickly. Um, and he doesn't step all the way through his throws all the time. You know, there's guys who, who don't step through their throws all the time like that. <clears throat> so I'm not going to kill that. Um, that, uh, those throw mechanics from the lower body consistently. I'm, I, I noted it enough at this point. Um, this is like the wrap up. If you, you know, if you're, if you're watching just part four, go back to part one, two, three, because we get all the, I get, a lot more in depth into like the the release, the footwork, all that stuff. Um, and I will more consistently in those shows to keep hammering it home. But I'm assuming when I'm doing this show, you've watched all the other parts. So it's a continuation. It's not a new show on Wilson in itself, if that makes sense to you, which I hope it does. Cause you know, uh, pump move, middle of field, close near great throw three by one. Holy shit. We haven't seen that before. <laughs> Same concept. Literally, same exact thing. Two verticals, dig inside. Drop back, read middle of the field. He actually looks to the outside and kind of sells it with his shoulders. Hmm, okay. Try to sell that. Get some pressure from his right side, steps up in the pocket. Obviously, it's hard for him to throw now with a guy wrapped around his legs. Um, if he was clean, he'd probably step up and hit uh, Dax, you know, right down that 45-yard line um, and kind of not, not necessarily float it past the linebacker, but throw it and lead the receiver to where the linebacker um, is going to have to also basically be in full sprint to catch up to that ball and tip it. So he'd probably lead him. Uh, obviously, he's getting dragged down by his foot. Wilson... So this is a situation where like, and we talked about it before with some of his other plays um, in terms of hitting a little bit too risky. And this might be, hold on, let me see the, the shoulder fake. Middle of the field, quick pump, look to his second read. Okay. You, you, you know, the only thing I will note is you do want to get, you, you do want to watch him getting a little bit too fancy when it doesn't, when it's not really doing too, too much. Um, you can argue if that's the case right there. Goes to throw the middle of the field or look towards the middle of the field. Now again, or does he? Yeah, feels that pressure. I like I like that he pulls the ball away. He, he's pretty consistently good with his ball security in the pocket. Pulls it away. If he didn't, that might have been a, for, a fumble. And then again, while falling down, almost makes a an absurd play. And there's a difference between him being too risky, too fancy. And then, you know, this is a, this is a fine decision. Like the window is open, try to hit it. You know, it's, it's not like there's a defender over there. It's not, that's a curl to flat. Who's taking it, you know, an, an uh, angle back to get underneath of that route. 
Um, so almost ridiculous play. And I don't have to sit, hate, uh, hate the decision. I'm sure there's some people who say, oh, you should just take the sack right there or whatever. But um, I don't agree with that. Uh, Wilson RPO, two by two gun. Okay, and it's from that glance route, which is just a deeper slant. Um, now, what Wilson's reading is, okay, the linebacker. The linebacker takes the run. If he fits in the run, you're going to trust your guy to win on, the, win on the glance route. That's all it is. Very, very simple. Read it. Hit it. Read that linebacker. He might have also checked the safety a little bit too. I'm not sure if he did. It looks like he read the linebacker. That's typically due to this RPO. He could have checked this too, though, just in case it was like, um, like cover one hole or just like he was a hole defender um, because of their pre-snap alignment. I'm not going to go completely guessing on that, but um, good RPO, obviously, seeing the linebacker uh, fit in the run game. Hit him, obviously, good location. His uh, His accuracy is pretty consistently really good. Um, so, oh, wrong play, 20, uh, 108. Wilson Reed, middle of the field level, Lev Zippo. Zip. All right, another three by one. Just sticks, stays around sticks. All right. I'm interested to know if it was pre-snap or post-snap that he uh, decided to go to his isolated side pretty early. Um, I saw this a couple of times with BYU where it would be three by one and he would just stare down an ISO. I'm not sure if that's coaching. I'm not sure if that's him. I'm not sure if that's um, – well, it's not even Dax over there. So it's, maybe it's a guy he trusts or – I don't know what it is, but he was pretty quick to go to that isolated side. Um, but now in terms of just the throw and the decision, you're trying to get to the first down marker. Um, I can't see again. I, I don't know why I didn't record the down and distance. It looks like a two. So it looks like second and 10. Um, good, uh, good ball in terms of location. Like it can't get any better, you know, with that, with this, with this corner inside leverage and over top. Um, this linebacker safety, whatever he, whatever he is, and like curl the flat. Um, it looks like they just ran like a three lock and inside, inside, closing down. Where do you want to throw this ball? Obviously to the sideline. Where does Wilson throw this ball? To the sideline. Hits his receiver right in the hands, drops it. So, especially last episode two, we watched this. Wilson had a good amount of drop touchdowns, you know, drop deep balls. Like he it's, and like for people to say, Oh, this window isn't tight and isn't translatable. Like, what are you, what are you watching though? Like that's not a translatable window. You know, now you could say, Oh, well, yeah, okay. And it will in the NFL, the, the, that corner would have closed down quicker on that. And, and he wouldn't have been as open. Okay. Then he wouldn't have thrown the ball. It's about decisions you make versus the leverages that guys are. And like, yeah, in the NFL, you know, windows might close quicker and you might, you might not pull the trigger on some balls. You might, you, you might pull the trigger on in college, but this is a, this is a throw you hit in the NFL. It's an NFL ball. It's, it's a, it's the, it's literally, you couldn't walk into a better place versus two guys inside tight end receiver, whoever it is, can't, can't hold it, uh, hold it in. That's, that's not Wilson's fault. I don't know. It's just funny. Like I said, I, I say this last episode too. It just annoys me when people talk about Wilson. The first argument they bring up is, oh, well, look who he played. You're showing me you did not really watch the guy. That's, if that's your first, you could bring that up somewhere in the argument. If that's your first and main point you hit on, I already know what you are. Wilson, read DB timing, two by two gun. Reverse pivot. Um, Now, by design, was this a, re a reverse pivot? 
little flash to the right, reverse out. I don't see why it would why it wouldn't be because it wouldn't make much sense if he just did this by himself because he has two reads to his to his backside, one crossing. So um, this could just be to hold the defense, whatever. But if you have two guys on the on the on the uh, the first read side um, and a guy crossing over, it could have been a, a reverse a design reverse pivot out like that, which it looks like it probably was, which is which is odd. But Wilson gets out now again reading his one to his two, whatever it may be, probably his one to his two. Um, Dax, he's reading the leverage of the cornerback. He knows the the curl is coming. So what does he what does he see? Again, just like we when we read corners and we when we know how to look at all the stuff or you know whatever, he sees corner, man coverage or man turn, hips open up to run deep. Who's gonna have the advantage breaking back? You know, the, 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 the corner who's open up front deep with no hands on with a yard or two off of the receiver or the receiver. Zach Wilson knows this, throws it. Perfect timing. The ball, the ball is out just as he's going into his break. He's not, he's not even working back to the ball yet. So that he makes a decision here to throw it, releases it there. It's out like now. And look him. Turn, boom, even has to wait a second ball is there. Right his face. Reverse pivot. Now again, works laterally, but gets that one right step horizontal. Where it's almost like that hook and re- yeah, he does that hook and replace step where it's left forward, right to replace it, and that gets you square. That gets you more on line. Um, instead of drifting out towards the sideline, hook, replace, upper lower body disconnection right there.